All right. Let's start with Joel in New York. Joel, you're talking to Eric and V. How are you doing? Hi, I'm Joel. Hey, Joel. I'm what do you want to talk about? No coronavirus. No coronavirus. So far. <laughs> I, I, well, Thanks, God. Thanks, God. <laughs> I mean, didn't... Okay, hold on. You're a believer, right? Yes, I'm here to present some arguments for that. Okay. The thanks God really got me confused, though. Didn't God give everybody coronavirus? <laughs> Um, you want to go into that? Um, we can leave it later, I think. Sure. Uh, maybe I, I should present first the arguments. Okay, sure. No problem. Um, but I think I... Joel, what would you like to say? Yeah, go today? ahead. <laughs> okay, basically, I first let me describe what type of argument I'm going to say. Okay. And basically, it's similar to ontological argument, or you call it in philosophy. Okay. It's by going through the definitions of, like, what we say God is, but and different than the Anselm argument, I'm basically, after defining what the characteristics, I will try to look out some candidates in the, in the world, if there are some candidates, and if we find one, there's a match, then we found them. Mm. How does that sound? I mean, doesn't everything that we understand about anything exist in the world, like don't all properties that we know of exist in the world, so wouldn't we just be picking and choosing which ones we liked? Um, like, give me an example. I mean, if you say something has a, has four feet, if we go out and we find something that's four feet, then, of course, we found something that has four feet. But if we describe a God, it should make sense that we describe actually God. Well, yeah, that would be Otherwise, my question. So say we were like, okay, well, we want to find the properties for God, so let's go into the world and find properties uh, that correspond to that God in the world. So here's this thing, it has four feet. Are we going to say that God then has four feet if that corroborates what we think? No. And then what, no. what do we do with all the things with two feet? Like, does God also have two feet? How are no, we well, just determining which properties uh, we're talking uh, uh, about? Yeah, well, for a if we start all with the properties with what 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 I define as God. Sure. And if we go out and we find a specific thing that actually has the properties, then we have actually found something that corresponds to the definition of God. So we have found God. Well, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm interested in find, hearing what your properties are because we could very quickly uh -huh. move into a very useless definition of God. I could say that God has the properties of a book. I'm holding this book, therefore I'm holding God. I know, and I understand. Okay. So, That's why we are going okay. to find it, yes. Sure. So okay. what do you got? So um, first thing is um, he's the first one. First what? First thing, first thing at all. Does the first, first he? The reality, the first thing that exists. I mean, he was before everything else. Well, already you're giving God more than one property because you're saying he. I mean... It, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's okay. no actually real... Genitalia. I was going to say it, it's not a he. Okay. Because she, she is not a, not a he. So okay. it's, it is neutral. But what I'm saying is that specific object is before everything else. Okay, so you are defining... God as the first extant object. Is that about right? Okay. Yes, that actually created everything. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Where'd you get creation? No, give me that second. This is, the, this is the second property. Or actually, um, maybe we'll leave it to the third, so we'll go to the second for a different uh, first, uh, that he doesn't have any physical and measurable properties. Okay, so your God is the empty set. Not the, like the empty set. He, it is an object. But well, the empty set. then object. it would have properties, right? Yeah, yes. does an object not have properties? And not physical or measurable. Okay. Um, so do you think we can someday measure God? Oh, it's like totally neutral. It's like the neutrino. We can... You, we well, we, we, we can actually... Totally neutral. I mean, neutrinos are things, problem. though. Yeah, they are actually measurable things. They do have a lecture wall or something yeah. like that. So, right. so, so what's the difference between your God and nothing at all? Oh. Okay, we'll come to that. We'll see if we can find a match. But I understand. Um, just trying to uh, yeah, your question about how we can define God and mm -hmm. if we can find something similar. So now I, I think we're getting to a, a close definition that if we do find something like that, then you will actually break. Uh, satisfied that it's it sounds like God. 
Well, it, it, it totally depends. It depends on whether or not you're going to, you know, try and shoehorn things into it. But um, so far, the first extant thing that has zero properties, um, which is somehow different from the empty set, um, but is not measurably different from nothing at all. Um, you have given me absolutely nothing. Okay. And the third property is that it's created everything else the okay. world has in the universe so, which is a hard definition of how to define created well I, I, so I I, I I I okay do you know of, so is nothing even possible I I what don't do think mean? so I, I don't I don't think nothing is even possible I think there's always something um, okay. So, I so, I so I, whether or not you want to, you know, start giving properties, let's start by nailing down what you're talking about because we're going to be rattling on. We're going to have to find a point where we're going to want to start start talking, right? I think um, here's as good a point of any as any as um, you're skipping past the empty set here. You're saying that you are defining a god in a way that is indistinguishable from nothing at all, and then moving on to giving that characteristics. Why would okay. you do that? I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss. If something no, is indistinguishable I, I, from nothing at all, then please distinguish it from nothing. Otherwise, your God, okay. by your own definition, does not exist. Okay, so let's start with the first candidate. Okay, um, first candidate is reality. What? Reality. The reality. Reality. What about reality? reality. It is the first thing. What, what is the first? Before thing? even space and time, because space and time are reality, so reality must have been before. No, so mm -hmm. I don't think you can have before without time. Do you understand how time what? works? What? You need time to have before, Joel. Okay, so if there was time, then it actually, it, then... For as long as it was time, reality was. Reality is at least time is dependent, contingent on reality, and reality is not contingent on time. So How do you we, what? Yeah, yeah. You can't have time if there's no reality. I mean, but yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I can. I can time. plot out a fictional timeline uh, all day long, and that. But it's not real. Agreed. And there you have time without reality. But it's not real. That's I the problem. totally agree. <laughs> so that's so reality is the first thing before even time and no. And, I, I, I just I just gave you time without reality. And not real time. I'm talking about real time. Okay. So V help me. Okay. <laughs> here's here's the problem. You are like Moving aside from all of these real time versus fake time versus whether or not you can have time without reality or reality without time, you are essentially trying to define a god into existence. And then you're going to try and justify that definition and find that god in reality. And the problem with that is that right off the bat, you are creating a god from what to, up to us appears to be your imagination. Right, I can give you three properties of a god just out of nowhere. Uh, what makes my definition of god more or less valid than yours? Are are you totally okay with us just coming up with definitions for god and then trying to validate those by looking at the world around us? Well, if you can find something that I would the definition would match what I would expect it for god, and I would say that accepted as a god, then. And actually, and you can find it. And actually, yeah, if you're gonna say something that has two feet is a god, I will not accept that. Why? But if I give some properties and you accept that that makes sense to be god, and then I find it, then it actually is actually what god is. I'm curious why you would reject my definition of god as something with four feet. Oh, I don't accept that as a god because by me, definition of god is something that. The that started the universe. That's right. Okay, that's your the, definition of God. My definition of God is something with four feet. I don't accept your definition of God as something that created the universe because to me, the only things I can accept as God are things with four feet. Do you see where we're at uh, an impasse here? I, I'm, I'm not exactly understanding. If you say that a man, the, the argument, if a man, if a man is something like a stone, 
and you would assign a man to be a stone, and you would argue with me that uh, man, people are stones. Then what can I what can I say then? I mean, God is right. The difference here is that we can point to people and we can point to stones and see the differences between them objectively in this reality okay. that you like a lot. With God, we don't have something to compare against. We can't see, we can't measure, we can't, th there is no object there to measure or to analyze. So how do we know if your definition is true except taking your word for it? I mean, what do you find God? What do you define God? I don't. No, we, we wait for people to call in so that we can meet them where they're at on their definitions. So oh, far, you've uh, given us a definition of um, nothing, and then you brought in time and reality as if those are dependent on a creator, which is an inference that we're not going to give you. So I don't know where you're going to go from here, but can you show that time or reality as a concept are tangible things or things that d are dependent upon a creator? Can you no, show that? Reality is the creator. Okay, so now you're just conflating things that sound cool. That's a deepity. Do you know what a deepity is? No. Okay, a deepity is something that sounds very, very profound until you break it down and you realize that there's nothing there. It's it's okay. It's all empty calories. Well, break it down. Right. So so well, let's. Break. Right, yeah, let, let, let's break it down. You're saying reality is the creator. Okay, and sadness yeah. is the destroyer. Ooh, <laughs> right? What the hell does that mean? Why, it means nothing. Why, sh why should sadness be the destroyer? Sadness doesn't destroy the world. But it, reality is the one that's before. It's not okay. created like you, you're, you're, creating it. So, so what, 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 everything. I, I, I think this one over your head, Joel. Um, there's a property that you're taking, right? Um, reality, right? When I said sadness, sadness is, is, is a descriptor. It is not a tangible thing. I can't hold sadness and show you sadness, right? I can show you examples of sadness, but I can't actually tangibly pick up sadness and put it over some, you know what I mean? I, I can't, it's, it's a concept. You're taking a concept and giving it physical qualities. And what, you're, what, what that's essentially doing is that's confusing a map of the place and the place itself. So you're saying, you know, here's my descriptor of, you know, Austin, Texas, right? Here's the map that I'm holding. Okay, can you take me to 6th Street? Yes. And you point at the map on 6th Street. No, 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 no. I want no, you no, to no. take me to 6th Street. Yeah, right here. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I want to be there. Can you take me there? Can I see it? Yeah, right here on the map. You're confusing the two things. If, if you want to ascribe physical tangible properties to something, then you need to show that it has physical tangible properties. Otherwise, they're, they're just descriptors that we create to understand and describe the universe. Right? If, if, if you were to say sadness in itself is a, is a thing that manifests, that's able to create or destroy, or that there is some other, you know, intangible concept that's able to, you know, make changes in reality as if they have consciousness, then you're anthropomorphizing, you know, concepts and it's weird and I don't know why you're doing it. No, I'm not going to follow you and say reality is the creator. That's a, that's a deepity. It means nothing. It's empty calories. Okay. Um, so basically you're saying that everything is real, but reality, but reality itself. Like what? all things in the world are real, are actual real tangible things, but reality is not a real tangible thing. D did I say any of that? No, here, this is, this is I think, the confusion. Please. Reality is a description of real things. Reality is not separate from the things that are real. Okay, so if we say so this is this I, world is real, then that description that, that, of this real world is reality. But it's not right. real things here and then reality up here separate from it. It's just describing real things in the world. And the way you okay. said reality created things makes it sound like you're talking about some separate reality up here uh, that is not connected to or contingent on real things down here. Okay, so let me um, explain a little bit, um, if rephrase it in my own words. Cool. Saying that reality is not a thing on its own; it's a property of everything else, but it's not a, 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 a it's not an act, object that is on rights. Right. Right. Okay. 
So um, that was our first candidate. So let's okay, so that's out the window. But at least you see why I define these properties for being uh, as being God. And well, and at least what I meant with these properties. So far, we have your God out the window because so far we are uh, zero, uh, zero and one. Yes, but in a okay. sense, but on the other hand, at least I'm showing you that people that do believe and they do claim that reality is a thing on its own, their own are not just really out of their mind, just a disagreement. If, if reality is like just like a mathematical, there is the, the Plato um, um, argument that mathematics are things on their own. So if we, if we would consider that reality is a, a, a thing on its own right, which I, um. I so far, I haven't proved it to you, but if someone will consider that... Okay, but the, the concept of platonic ideals has been kind of dismissed by modern philosophy. So I'm not saying that you are out of your mind. Like, I wouldn't say that somebody who considered platonic ideals to be realistic uh, representations of, of this world, uh, I wouldn't call them, you know, out of their mind. I would just say, hey, that's a concept that was presented by Plato and has since been kind of dismissed by more modern thinkers. Uh, so it's a it's a way of looking at the world for sure, but it doesn't accurately represent reality. So um, I understand again. where you're say what you're saying. Yes, I understand that it's it's a way of looking Thank at things you. in the same way that numbers exist out there somewhere as well. Uh, but the more we've learned about the world, the more we've come to the realization that that's not an accurate way of looking at things. Okay, I know that. I'm fully aware of that, but I'm just trying to explain. I mean, God hasn't dis been dismissed the way Plato's uh, argument has been dismissed. I'm not going into why that hasn't been dismissed. Maybe it's just a fallacy of the people, but as a matter of fact, uh, there are a lot of people, and I'm just showing you, there is an argument. First of all, we found a candidate, and especially if someone wants to believe that reality, and he believes that reality should be granted to be an, a thing on its own, it makes a lot of sense to say so, although we can't say that this is actually the case, but at least we can dismiss someone that actually says that way. So no, we un wait, wait, what? So I, I agree that I can understand where that person is coming from because I understand what they're trying to say they think the world is like, but that doesn't mean that because I understand where they're coming from, I can agree with it or think that they're on the right track. I think That's that there's... 100%. Right, okay. I, I fully, I'm fully with that to you. So I will go to the next candidate. So far we have the, had a candidate, but he had a problem. So we go to the next candidate. Okay. Are Sorry. you going to continue to give the first candidate to other people? Um, we will come back to that. Do you, still, do you still feel that reality is a good descriptor of God? We will see if the second candidate actually... Well, I, 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 no, first, hold on. Let's, 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 let's finish this really. Do you, we have given you good reason to drop this first piece that you gave us. We sat and um, talked about it. We honest, went over it with you. To be honest, I have written down everything that I'm planning to say on this. Hopefully, we'll have enough time. This is actually your your arguments are actually on the list and what I will say afterwards. So it's not that you came up with something that... Oh, I'm glad that we're on his schedule. <laughs> I hope that we can... Yeah. Yeah. Joel. I just comment he, to the next... No. That. Hold on. Are you going to line out that piece? Are you going to go, you know what, that is a bad descriptor, and then take that off of your tool belt? Or are you going to continue using that because you're not listening? Or I don't know why you would continue to perpetuate something after you were given and shown good reasons for dropping it. Are you dropping Can it? I are you being an, an honest interlocutor here? Are you listening to us yes. and engaging with us in a way that you are willing to say, hey, I could be wrong, and then revise things to try and have a bit more clear view of reality? So first of all, what I said now, I, I agree that it, it's not it's not a must, but it's a way to describe what we're talking about. So first I started with properties. Now after we gave reality, I said basically that what believers is, they believe that reality is actually a real thing and but, this is God. So basically I haven't, we haven't disproved anything. We actually have just gave it a name instead of just properties, we actually gave it a name. So if we find something that is God and has all these properties, it's most probably proven basically that reality is on things on its own. Okay, so it's you're not problem. dropping it. I'm Pe dropping it, it's a good description. It's a good name, it's a good way of describing it. Are you saying that you're uh, describing God as reality? Yes. 
Okay, and we just said that reality doesn't exist as its own thing, and you said, okay, we'll go with that. So isn't that admitting that God doesn't exist as its own thing? No, I just didn't say that I admit, agree with that. I said that I didn't prove that it is a separate thing in its own. That's all we are actually on looking around to find now. That's exactly what we're trying to find. But first, so you're going to try and prove to us that reality exists outside of real things in the world? Yes, that's what I want to do, hopefully. That's what I started initially with, but at least we have now a better description of what I said about God. No, we've conflated Four. is what we've done. We, we've added something ephemeral to the description that can be used to hijack bad ideas and it, it, it doesn't sound good, dude. It doesn't sound good. It's a, you don't have to use that name, but at least if someone is getting... If yeah, if get, somebody believes it, then they believe it and we can understand that they believe it because they believe it. Tautology, tautology, tautology. Yeah. Yes, okay, we're in circles. Yes, if somebody believes, they believe. I got it. We're good. Yes, but I didn't ask you for tautologies. What I'm asking you and what we're both asking you is if you're honestly engaging with this or if you're just waiting to what see if it still makes sense after the fact because you're going to back your way into it no that, that's not what, I, what i'm saying what i'm saying is that um in order to come back if we want to come back to what the properties of god is if we say let's say i propose let's say that there is an independent reality and this is god this is a reality that's independent from all other it's not just a property of things it's an object on its own right then it's always easier to come back and check out the properties to see if we found the match. I, I, I understand where you're going with this, but I have a couple of concerns that I feel like we're not going to get to address. And one of them is why did we, we didn't agree to call God reality. We kind of got led on this, this uh, kind of adventure and came out the other side and you said, well, now we agree that God equals reality. That's not something we agreed on as a group. Um, so moving with that as the, the goal now uh, is going to lose us very quickly because you've introduced that concept into the argument without getting everybody's agreement that that's something we can agree on. So that's the first problem. The second problem is okay. that you are going off of this idea that if you can find properties of this claimed thing in the world that proves that this thing exists and we didn't agree to that either so even if we get all the way to the end of your argument and we see that like okay you've reached the end this is cool we're still lost we're not going to get it we're not going to be convinced because the method and the de definitions that you're using were not agreed upon as a group so okay so okay Go ahead. No, so that's essentially, those are the, the things that I'm seeing right now, even outside of the the messiness of the words we're using, uh, those two things are going to keep me from being convinced by your argument. So unless we can address um, those two things, I don't see the point in continuing talking. Yeah. Okay, so I wanna, I wanna address. So the first thing the first thing you said that you never agreed that um, reality it has all the properties that you said, or that it is God, um, you never agreed, but the fact is that the only objection you raised is that reality is not a separate thing; it's a property of other things. You didn't. You, this was the only objection, which I assume means that besides that, you have no objection. So all we can actually show that reality. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So you're saying that this incredibly valid and perfect objection that dismisses the entire point you're making. There's only one of them. Then you can assume that there's no objection. Which means what? If that I can actually prove that reality is a thing in its own right. Okay, so hold on. I, let, let's 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 take another abstract concept. I really want you to get this, Joel. Heaviness is heaviness something that exists outside of descriptors of of it. If let's say, can you take me to heaviness? Where does heaviness live? Let's say it exists. Well, no, no, don't. <laughs> That's the whole point, Joel. No, where does heaviness live? It lives nowhere. I mean, it lives nowhere. Uh, we can agree with that, uh, right? Laura had that idea that mathematical objects exist outside. Where are they? Where are they? Can we call them? What do you mean, where are they? Well, you said they exist, so where are they? Can you take me to the number one? Take me to your number five. Where are they? If it's something that is not supposed to be under space and time, it is before it is it's non-existent and you it is literally nothing it is a concept 
a construct in your mind. I can draw a map of Narnia as a concept, right? That is a place that does not exist that we can look at and view and think of as a, t as a concept, as an idea. Those ideas are not existing. I understand that's full. No, you don't. I, I, th th then please, where is reality? Take me to reality's house. Let me meet yeah. them. Have them call in. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yes. Okay, so you're talking about what exists, right? I'm, and I'm Hello. Saying, yes, I'm saying. No, I'm talking to the book. Hold on. <laughs> oh, wait. You're just talking about the manifest world. This is the world that we're in. I, I, I don't understand how you're ascribing extra properties or, or do you think that books are part of some greater mind? I, I don't understand. Okay, maybe not books is a good uh, example. Rocks are part of some greater mind? What? What do you mean rocks are part of greater minds? So, uh, so, sure, sure. So, so, so you're saying reality exists all around us, right? So we look at reality. Okay, fantastic. What is this reality evidence of? It's, re it's evidence of itself, correct? Fantastic. Yes. Okay, cool. So what are you saying about reality? That reality exists? Uh, well, by definition, you know, I, things that exist, exist, right? Yeah, reality might be a separate object. I no, it's not. That, it is not a separate object. It is not. That's, that's, well, that's, that's, What's that's it separate that's from? from? What could it be separate from? It can be an object on its own thing. It doesn't have to be with any other uh, other thing. It doesn't have to be a table. But if it's if if, it's, it's, if reality uh, is something separate outside of real things, then by definition, it is not real. No, it's real because it's reality. It's a thing that's called reality. Where does this reality live if not in the real world? What do you mean? Where does it live? It's everywhere. It's space is reality. So you ask where space lives. But it's space. Space is a reality. You know, you know already that space okay. is not actual and, 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 and actually intervene and they can actually, there are things just like any other things. I mean, that's what relativity is all about. So it's not always possible to ask where it lives on something that we know it's before space and time. Space and time are dependent on reality. You can't have before I time. Did. I'm sorry. That's, what? It's gonna, you can't have a before time. Because the concept before is contingent on the existence of time. I understand. No, I, how do you understand and yet not understand? Okay, you understand what V just said, right? You cannot have before time. Okay. okay. Did something ever exist before time? Yes. <laughs> I think we're done. I mean, I'd no. be happy to continue talking next there week. But... Sure, feel free to call in. Joel? Please go back and listen to that. What? It was before time. Yeah, the Big Bang was before time. There was no space and no time. Space and time are interwinked together. That, that's not... No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Wait. I, okay. I see that we have the goalpost. <laughs> and, and, I, and, 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 and I see that it is, it is, it, it is moving. Um, that's not what I asked you. Do, I asked you, are you making the claim that something existed before time? which is not a thing, and you said yes, even though we very clearly went over it. This means... What do you mean? I don't understand what you just said. Can you explain it to me? No, you can go back and listen. Um, we'll you talk to you next week. There's something before time. There's a possibility of something to be before time. So There's no possibility of something time. existing before time. Or, yeah. Not something. But your question is why you call something. If the Big Bang was before time. So it's possible to be something without time. It's possible to be reality without time. That was by the Big Bang. Okay. So it is possible to be reality without time. That's exactly what I said. I didn't say something like in heaviness or in, in tables and objects. I said about reality. It's possible to have reality before time. Uh, yeah. How about next week you yeah. call in without a script? Because I think that the thing we got hung up on more than anything else was that you were trying to get down your list of things to talk about instead of coming in and kind of having a real conversation here. So I'd love to have a real conversation with you, Joel, yeah. but okay. it's going to have to be next week. Definitely. Take care. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's... I asked him, are you being an honest interlocutor? Are you listening and engaging with me? And he repeated himself. I, he didn't, he, I, it just. 
It kind of blows me away. <laughs> I just, it's, it's frustrating. I feel like every time we agreed on something, we agreed, yes, and then forgot that we agreed on it. Yeah. Seconds later. Just no but object we permanence. we just talked about this. No. Anyway. <laughs> uh, 